Hi guys, me again on my addict. Um, I'm going to explain why uh, gravity is only skin deep. Um, let's start out over there. Um, helium 4, a cluster of 4 nucleons, they're all gridlocked, have a valence, valence of 2. That's Those are all different arrays of isotopes. And I'm going to jump from helium to over here a valence of 8. This is a little list I made. You can find it on my internet, on my website. Shield 1, four, uh, made out of 4 nucleons max. That's your helium. So this is a list of the number of atoms, of, excuse me, the number of nucleons an atom is made of. Over here we see those atoms uh, getting constructed, growing uh, in size. Well, over there you see those thick lines. They're all just Q-tips. Every Q-tip represents a nucleon. They fold open and then catch either single nucleons or these tripods or these four parts. And they're all made out of those uh, clusters of nucleons folding open. This is the thing what happens in the sun, black holes. They get, uh, they get cluttered and then in open space they fold open. They fold open open space and you can see them catch those building blocks. So those are the only, these are the only useful building blocks, single ones, tripods, four parts. I'm going to add four parts to those atoms creating shields. And every time again, you can add one over there, three part, creating those a three part over there, adding a three part. And therefore you can grow from eight valence to 18 valence. That's all uh, rehearsal, of course. Um, now again, this little array, one and two, is made out of 15 nucleons. You can count the 15 nucleons, 15 Q-tips. I'm gonna add eight tripods, means eight times four is 32 nucleons. And that's the third shield, is 32 nucleons added. You can forget about this list, this is exclusive, which means, well, in short, if I add a tripod on this atom and another one, you will notice there's one sticking out. But look at my models, those one have, ones have vanished. Um, that's more of a practical reason actually to make it more, well they're going to grow out, they're going to grow out very big and uh, it's going to be a mess if I add those on. So that's why I left them out. But in reality, they're on there. So this is not just three. There's another one. Four times eight. 32. Added. It's the third shield. 32. And over here, this list it says 24. That's without those um, and nucleons on top. So, but you can forget this. This is not that. Uh, this is actually. Not very wrong. This is far more probable. This is far more likely. Um, going at three, uh, do you have 18 uh, valence, 32 nucleons added, right? That's shield three. Shield four, this is this shield, this is the red shield on top of the blue one. And again, I filled out. No single ones, no single, no single nucleons were added for four. Uh, no three pots were added for four. We only had four pots to create to create the four. And we can see those four pots. See these four pots in there. This is a tip. Look at it. Four pots. So shield four is made out of four pots exclusively, and. This way I can keep track of the number of nucleons per shield. And if I add those shields, I can keep track of the number of nucleons every atom, every element is made of. Say we have here shield 5, that's tin, 
Shield 5. That's 50 valens and it's made out of, let's see, 1, 2, 3 and 5. All together makes 233 uh, nucleons. This big one, this curium, is made out of 607 nucleons. Uh, you can uh, dispute it, but look at it. it. It's exactly, I've counted those. You can count them again if you lose, lose my list. You can build them yourself if you wish, using Q-tips, using glue, build them yourself. Count those Q-tips, you will end up with 607 uh, nucleons. However, the atomic weight of curium is only 244.06. Well, this isn't a very round digit, so that's, you know it's wrong, because this is the most common sense. If you have an atom made out of 600 nucleons, your, this is, uh, every U is one, uh, nu uh, is the weight of every, one U is the weight of one nucleon. So, if you have uh, an atom built out of 600 Nucleons, the weight should be 600, right? Well, in this case again, it's scientists with their stupid skills. Well, you can use skills, but not in quantum physics, come on. And they think mass and weight is the same, well, it's not. And so, because when I look at those, all those atoms, their mass is determined by their inertia and that's the number of elements that it's made of and that should be a line but it isn't it should be like this this is the most common sense atomic that's why i write down atomic mass because this is mass inertia you, you will find that, that this inertia is exactly right and looking at the digits looking at the numbers mainstream science delivers this we get they are, very, they are very low so the weight is is far less than the mass than the actual mass so that's funny and um well it actually uh confirms my uh uh my theory that gravitons and electrons are the same objects it also confirms that mass and weight are not the same thing they have nothing in common um, how can I make this clear? Um, well, these things, the mass of these things is, is, is measured on scales. And since um, gravitons only interact with the outside ones, the outside nucleons, only the outside nucleons are getting weight. And um, I tried that out and I count it, I have this wonderful uh, <laughs> schedule here, this wonderful, um, oh well, this, well, what do we call this, oh hell, it's uh, letters on paper and numbers on paper, call it whatever you like, but <laughs> look, meticulously I've been writing down the numbers of nucleons all those atoms are made of and you can count them as i said so having that in hand i can uh, count the number of um, nucleons on the outer shields so shield 7 the outer shield 7 has 200 nucleons and shield uh, number 6 with the 72 valence shield 6 has 174 nucleons so, and if I use those numbers, if I look at the uh, atomic weight, uh, which is you can be, which can be found on the internet on various websites, look at the atomic weight and look at the number of nucleons the outer shell is made of. Cuium has a weight of 244. The outer shell is made of 200 nucleons. Hafnium. 178, outer shell made of 174. Tin, 118, made out of 127. Those are in line. 
the number of nucleons on the outside and the weight of those atoms are in line. Isn't that marvelous? And even if I go into more detail, if I uh, scratch out the more obscure ones and give extra points for, for ones on a... Well, let's see, look at this one. You see the red ones, they are not the yellow. The yellow layer is the outer layer. The red ones are the previous layer, but they're almost at the surface. So I add points for that. And the duck points for the ones who are inside, who, who, who can't be reached. Look at the, 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 the yellow ones here. This is an inverse pyramid. Those yellow ones here in the middle, those yellow ones, one, two, three, four, they cannot be reached from the outside, so I deduct those. So, and even if I, so when I do that, it gets even more precise. This number is almost the same as those. So the weight depends on the surface on the surface of the atom. The weight of the atom depends on the surface of the atom. Whereas the mass of the atom, the inertia, depends on the entire number of nucleons, not only the nucleons on the outside. So, when we have an atom growing in size, the mass grows with it in a very Nice line, it should. But the weight, the gravitons only interact with the outer shell, with the outside of the atom. So mass and weight differ. And we can see this in the graph. You know, the mass increasing, weight increasing the same rate. Watch the start. Start with the same weight, but then slows down. Got the same thing here. It starts the same, and then when it grows bigger, the inner nucleons cannot be reached by gravity. Well, what does this prove? Well, this once again proves that weight and mass have nothing in common. They are not related. It also proves that um, nucleons only interact with the outside, uh, I'm sorry, gravitons only interact with the outside of an atom. Uh, let's take lithium here. Um, this is lithium. Actually, it's a bit overstretched. You see the blue members? They're quite long. They should be as long as this one, maybe. So that will make the very compact, very compact construction with all those things spinning. Um, sorry for that, so suppose I stick this one on top, make it a part of the atom, and this one can spin, and so do the quarks within the atom. But again, let's take this graviton, it cannot penetrate the atom, it cannot penetrate the outer shield. So if a graviton was smaller, it was substantially smaller than an electron, you see this is an electron, an orbit, this is a proton, electron, an orbit. If a graviton was much of, or smaller, it, it would be able to interact with the inner, with the inner uh, nucleons. But as we saw, comparing mass and weight, they do not interact, they only interact with the outside. So this means a graviton is about the same size as an electron. Um, and there's something else which is pretty fascinating. And I wonder if people ever noted it. We all know this experiment with um, a feather. This represents a feather made of say, carbon, whatever. And um, this is uh, a drop of uh, mercury or, uh, say, uranium, a very big atom, as seen here, the bigger the atoms. You know, the inertia stays the same, but the weight uh, doesn't comply anymore because only the outsides are weight. The outside you can weigh, but not the inside. So, 
That's what this means, it's a big atom, a big atom on the outside. So now we look at, uh, we know this experiment with the feather and the piece of lead in the, in the vacuum. Now in the air, the feather will uh, encounter resistance from the air, which is resistance. And the, um, and the graviton does not, so, of, uh, sorry, the, the, the lead does not, the feather encounters resistance, the lead does not encounter resistance. Lead is down on the ground before its first one. But now, look what happens in a vacuum. We are all taught that in a vacuum, they move at similar speeds, but that doesn't make sense, and I think it's wrong too. Look, this is your uh, feather again, or, or your or carbon fibers. Gravity is pulling. This is mercury, gravity is pulling. But I predict in a vacuum that your carbon fibers will be on the ground before the heavy mercury. And you know why? Because the inertia of the mercury it's bigger. It's like the road runner. When the road runner jumps from a cliff, it goes in the air and goes like this and then goes down. So that's what inertia does for you. It, 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 it makes it accelerate slower. The, um, the feather, the, the carbon fibers, they have a lot of space in between them and gravitons can easily Go in between those uh, molecules, in between those atoms, there's no problem. So it's, this will react. Your uh, feather will react, react like this. Mass and weight, the same. Inertia, inertia, and weight, about the same. But over here, inertia is far bigger compared to the weight. So there's more inertia compared to weight when it comes to bigger atoms. So I predict that uh, a big heavy atom uh, will fall down slower than uh, a very small atom in a vacuum. So that's all. I hope I've proven enough that the size of gravitons and electrons are similar. I hope I've proven that graviton uh, gravity is only skin deep, it only interacts with the outer shells, the outer shield of those atoms. Well, that's it for today. Um, thanks and have a nice day.